We live? Now we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, we went back to Facebook because we had uh, technical problems on YouTube and nobody could find us. So I hope that um, some of you that weren't able to be here last week are going to be able to join tonight. Uh, and we're going to change the format a little bit because I, I kind of miss doing my fireside chats for those of the, you that know my fireside chats. So we're going to incorporate... Um, I'm going to incorporate a question or an issue into every every um, tub talk that we do. And I thought tonight we would springboard off of a question that was asked last week about the Me Too movement and how that has affected film production, film casting, all of that stuff. Um, and I have a perfect guest for this because Shannon, do you say the L? Uh, Shannon no, Lee Reeve. Yeah, that's what Shannon Reeve. Reeve. <laughs> But she goes by Shannon L. Reeve, <laughs> is a, a little bit of everything. She's an actress, she's a director, she's a stunt woman, she's a, a, well, she was an AD for us on Crazy Bitches. Mm -hmm. And by the way, an amazing AD. I, I don't think I could make anything without you now. <laughs> Thank you. Well, really you were an amazing think. director to work yeah. with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your communication yeah. skills are amazing. Oh, good. And your vision. Oh, good, thanks. <laughs> anyway, we love each other. Yeah. Um, so, so I think she's a good person to engage in this conversation because she's on a number of sides of, of the conversation itself. Um, because the way actors get treated, you know, is different than how I think about how I do my job. So um, first I just want to give you a chance to get to know Shannon a little bit. Um, we met at a Starbucks. We did. Maram, who was here last week, introduced us. She told me that she had an amazing AD and I, I absolutely needed to hire her, so we went and met. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually, I don't know if you remember this, I think we email exchanged on Crazy Bitches 1. Because Kathy, really? because I knew Kathy and John, huh. and you guys were looking for like a last minute, maybe we never got connected, but that's the first I got hooked onto you because Kathy and John were headed to- Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. <laughs> Um, they were headed to do it and something happened or needed a stunt person. They got it filled, so maybe you and I actually never did communicate, but that huh, was no, when you were on my radar and I was like, oh, what is this crazy bitches and what is this female director who's amazing? I <laughs> had no idea. That's so yeah. funny. And then Starbucks. And then Starbucks. And you know, it's interesting because I, I'm not a good vetter, right? I just sort of go, do I like this person? Do I not? And I, I think that it actually works because the times when I've gone through the process of Oh, we're gonna talk and I'm gonna look through all your stuff and we're gonna figure out you know what do you know and what you don't know and how do you like to work and right like and you go through a bunch of people and you try to figure out who, out of all those people who's right in the end it usually comes down to who you liked anyway yeah and so I'm not sure that this is the best thing but I do tend to like to just go one person hi oh yeah I like you <laughs> okay done hired <laughs> and you know and it worked yeah yeah, we had fun. And then we followed it up with Star uh, not Starbucks Coffee Bean. To make mm -hmm. sure we were all good. <laughs> to make sure that we were a couple, that it was working. Yeah. You know, you never know. Yeah. But that feedback was fantastic for me because it helps me grow. Yeah. And just to check in and make sure that you had what you needed. I always forget the bubbles. The bubbles. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put them on low, though. But here's the bubbles, everybody. Um, it's hot. As you can tell, I'm it's sweating. Really it's delicious. Hot, I, I love it. <laughs> the actresses all show up with their makeup, and I feel like going, don't put your makeup on because it's going to come off. Um, it should have so, just come straight from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you could have. I know, it just soaked all this yeah. so, so, So the other thing that's interesting, and one of the things I, I mentioned is that I didn't know this, but while we were shooting, we, we had a stunt that was um, the actor was having problems doing. I mean, like, I had my actors doing everything, you know, falling into the water, getting safely. hit with. Safely. Safely, yeah, safely. Um, <laughs> But Shannon actually had to pick up and do a water stunt for me, and um, got to. You got to. I got to. You got I, to. When you said yes, <laughs> I was. It was a very lucky thing because I, <laughs> we would have been missing that shot otherwise. But, but it is. It is a safety thing, and it is something that you are conscious of when you're shooting a film. Mm -hmm. How do you keep an actor safe in those situations? Mm -hmm. But then it travels into this Me Too subject. Um, because you also have to keep the actors safe when they are vulnerable and naked mm -hmm. and in sexually uh, overt mm -hmm. content 
actions mm -hmm. um, to make sure that everybody feels right. Now, I don't know if you know this, but mm -hmm. HBO and a couple of other companies now have a on-set, like, I don't know what they're calling them, um, they're like a sexual parent. comforter or whatever. I, it's, they're hiring people directly to mm -hmm. just tell you, to, to, to be the negotiator uh, between what the director wants and what the actors feel comfortable with and, and mm -hmm. make sure everybody on the set feels comfortable with. Merriman and I talked a little bit about mm -hmm. this, but mm -hmm. I personally think that it's not, it's, it's a, a necessary thing if you have a director who's not sensitive. Yes. But why are you hiring a director that's not sensitive? I agree. I mean, I just don't understand. Yeah. Well, and even just, I mean, working with you directly as your first AD, I saw we knew what was going to be a closed set, and it didn't even have to be completely naked, and every actor or actress has a different level of comfort, but, I mean, there's a real, I understand why they're doing it, I think they're protecting themselves yeah. just uh, legally. Hey. Hi, Haley Reid. <laughs> um, but... I think that when you find people, and it's one of the things that I enjoyed working about you, because part of what some people don't know is that a first AD not only keeps track of time and other things, but it's safety. Um, it's the first point of contact if an actor does feel uncomfortable they should be able to go to. And so to have a director that was so sensitive and cared al already, I didn't have to go to Jane and say, okay, close that, what are we thinking? No, Jane knew this is closed, this is not. And I think that protects the actor because when you're an actor and when you're in that vulnerable place, you are not yourself. Yeah. And there's, uh, she says she needs one in real life. Needs oh, one. I know. Uh, uh, a hello. Oh. A hello in real uh, life. Okay. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> we met in Houston a year ago, which was awesome oh. for another film festival. Um, but the, the actors are, uh, I mean, Blue is the Warmest Color is an example, yeah. um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo Trilogy, the Swedish version is, a, is an example, where the actors oh. are so into their character that it's not until you go, oh my goodness, what just happened? And so I think being able to prepare for that and plan for yeah. that, and you do that. I, I, I mean, yeah. I witnessed it. You, yeah. you talked with everybody before yeah. it got to the point where they needed to be in actor mode. Yeah. Well, I always, when, when I always try to do, I think we talked about this last week, but nudity writers, mm -hmm. which, you know, like Carrie was like, yeah, some people feel more comfortable with them, so I always offer that. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to do what you shoot what you don't want me to shoot. Mm -hmm. I can make anything work, so I would, I don't mind if you're completely naked because that gives me more options, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can't show on, on uh, the internet anyway. Like, yeah. really, there's, you know some things that we actually got that you have to cut that I have to cut mm -hmm. because it's, we won't be able to get it out on the internet but um yeah. hi Hillary on the, the East, Coast. East Coast that's the writer of Passage writer oh, cool. and producer oh well and, what, oh, yeah <laughs> why don't you tell them what what that is before well we're digressing we'll digress we'll be we'll back get, we'll get back to Hillary in a minute <laughs> but um so as an actress have you had any situations where you felt uncomfortable or felt like you weren't protected i i didn't because the times that i had i did a series um where the characters were very overtly sexual and all of that and i think one of the things that i knew going into it was the fact that the director and the writer really wanted more and more and more and so i knew that if i got to a point where i wasn't comfortable that i had to say no because they were going to push for everything and so i had to take that and i think that as, especially as a starting actor or a mm -hmm. young actress, or you are so hungry for that job and you're yeah. terrified that no is yeah. gonna be the end. Yeah. And I have to say, I think that's no is an empowering word. It is empowering and that's a great way to put it. You're fearful that no is gonna be the end. Yeah, I and think I, that's what Me Too has changed because everybody's talking about it and they're not tolerating it anymore. I hope, I'm not sure how long it'll last, but we'll, we'll just uh, hope that it does. But you know, I actually had an experience with nudity on a set and it, it was something that wasn't written into the script explicitly. The director wanted me to be naked, but I was in a very vulnerable position. I was going to look at a wand to see if I was pregnant. <laughs> As you do. I get out of the shower and I'm gonna walk over naked and go, hey, I wonder if I'm pregnant, you know? I mean, uh, it was like, it was a weird, awful, like the scene was hard anyway. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 you have to, I, I, like, I will compromise and if you fog the windows, mm -hmm. I will, I'll do it. And then mm -hmm. you can, I'll swipe it so you can see my face in the mirror, which was the sh main shot. Yeah. But. Uh, the director didn't like that and the producer didn't like that and I refused to come to set until they got the bathroom fogged up mm. fogged the mirror I mean bought the proper things to make to it happen yeah. and um, They ordered the first AD mm -hmm. To go get me to set mm. and he said no, I'm not gonna do it. That's great. If she's not comfortable. We're not that's amazing We're not gonna make her and they fired him They fired him, but he didn't get sued later. 
So there's a plus. Well, right, and, <laughs> and in the end, they that had to sucks. do what I asked or they didn't get the shot. Exactly. So they, they ended up doing it, but I was terrified. I was <sighs> really young and I was super terrified and I did think no was gonna be the end, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you do, you feel very vulnerable, so yeah. I get that. Yeah. You know, I think the other, the other place, and I didn't, we didn't touch on this last week, but the other place that I do think that it affects is the casting office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I don't know if you've had any circumstances where you've had to come in and paste these or a little... Or let them know that here's what your body looks like yep. and, yep. you know, it's a very vulnerable, odd thing, really. Well, and with Skype and everything, um, I, I know an actress who literally had to send full nudes, full frontal, back and front, and she said, I really have a problem with this because it's my face, it's my body, I have distinguishing tattoos, so let's compromise. And he was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm casting this from afar and all this, and at the end, they compromised with covering, uh, like, a merkin or a privacy patch, and then um, cutting off the head, right. so that it wouldn't, and then uh, they also photoshopped they out the tattoos. They could have just done a bikini. Right? I mean, but they, really, really. But why can't they, it's like their imagination is so limited that they can't figure out what boobs look like underneath. I know, it's crazy. It's we really love supportive men. men, yes, we do. we do. What responsibility do guys have on a set? <laughs> Well, you know, guys have the same responsibility. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether they take it and how comfortable they are executing it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's more of a, well, I shouldn't say there's more of a culture of kind of a, they, you get on a set, it gets a little raunchy at times. Yes. I mean, that's just part of the experience, I well, think. When you but say, you ha now, I don't know, now you can't. The number of times I've cut myself, I, I worked on a couple of projects this summer that um, all had bits of nudity, various degrees, and the men were wearing um, the little privacy patches that literally the string goes up their butts um you know to hold it in place and they really the men advocated for themselves they were so so smart and so good but again it goes back to i think empowering and telling the talent that they have the right to do that and then like you said be sensitive be like sensitive, a yeah. director if you're gonna do 20 takes of a very vulnerable scene be there for your actor that yeah. that is that whatever they are diving into that is that's dark or deep yeah it's hard yeah. because you know you're bringing up everything that you feel inside yeah. of your own experience. So yeah. um, you know, and those the guys' things are really odd too because they're just they're socks. They, they call them socks. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, the socks too. We yeah. had we had a weird thing. A oh, sock yeah, would have yeah. been more comfortable. But. but you know, it's like normally it would just be like the yeah. sock thing, and mm -hmm. it's strapped on, so it's covering the penis. But mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit like if you've ever been to the south of France. <laughs> yes. And you see the guys <laughs> on the beach with their what? Are they, oh, they has a name for it. They're Bling sling, or they're, I don't know, whatever it is. I was looking at Bob, and Bob's like, no, I don't, like, know. <laughs> I don't know. But, but yeah, it, that's all it is. It's mm -hmm. not really covering no. much, but it does give a sense of protection. Protection. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I had an interesting experience with Crazy Bitches when I was casting the web, the season two web series Spa Days, what we worked on. I, I, I needed a character with large bosoms. That was part of the character. It's mm. written into the script. Her whole behavior is dictated by it. And the first time I put the call out, it was sort of circumspect and, you know, used a lot of euphemisms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept getting these women coming in with like B cups. Oh, wow. You know, but they had a lot of padding on. And I was, I at some point, I just had to go, I'm sorry, but that's you're a B right yeah. I mean you know and I felt I, I felt like a if I had been a guy that would have been un uncomfortable yeah. and un, un, you know improper yeah yeah but how do you actually get what you want so then yeah. I went back and I relisted it and mm. I put I need a D or larger and the casting service wouldn't list it they made me change wow. the, the words and I was wow. like I already did this this hidden way. euphemism thing. I'm and I, you know, I, I need people to know it's part of the script. It's important. Yeah, part yeah. of this, of it this was. character. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was just a really interesting, and I don't know if that's because of Me Too or not, but that it's so interesting because if your doctor ever, go ahead. Oh. Um, the question was, did I put more nudity in CB2 and why? If so, why? And the answer is yes, I did. And the reason is. A, when I finished Crazy Bitches, uh, I had a, bu a bunch of people, I, we were, I was looking for money, and they kept asking, if, are there tit, is there tit in the movie? And a lot of my actresses were like, we would have given you tit, I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, re mm -hmm. really? Because I was so scared to ask, I didn't want to, I wanted this to be a project that the actor felt empowered by. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we worked around it. And in this one, I was like, well, it's the web. And I'm, you know, I had a, a lot of supporters in, with you guys, and I put some money in. And so I had nobody to be beholden to. Yeah. So there was that. And I had actresses that were comfortable and willing. And, and so, very proud of their bodies. And very proud of their bodies. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I look at them, and I think, I wish that I could be <laughs> that free yeah. and love myself that much. Mm -hmm. And not in an arrogant way. No, it was more of just that European. It's like we, we in America shame. We shame our bodies. We shame our faces without makeup. We shame everything. Men, you know, they want the abs or they don't want to take off their shirt until dad bod thing, mm -hmm. you know? But it is. It's, um, it's a real fine line. But I think back to kind of yours and then what also what the question was, a doctor would never say, hey, your bazoombas are, you know, they're causing a problem with your back. And I think that that's where that fine line, because in, in this Me Too movement, people have made jokes at others' expense. It all comes down to intent. It does come down to intent. How do you say it? What is your meaning? Oh. Talk about shaming women. Women shaming, shaming women. Women shaming women. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not on your side. That's a hard, that's hard. No, no, not on my side. My set. Sure. No. But, but we've seen it. <laughs> but women shaming women. I mean, that's really... I mean, honestly, you guys, those of you who've seen Crazy Bitches, the feature, know that it's really, that's what it's about. It's about this idea that, you know, we're all beautiful. We have big boobs, small boobs, you're tall, you're, I've always described myself as athletic. Me or, too. <laughs> yeah, except you're tiny athletic and I'm, I'm a... Uh, we would survive stocky. an apocalypse. That's all that matters. We would. We would. <laughs> we'd kick some ass and then we'd have to find someone to get us impregnated. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, because, I don't know, Bob might not be there. He's silent. Anyway, <laughs> he's silent. Bob's but days, uh, Bob's days with the uh, okay, but it's not happy here with Bob. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but you know, I, I think that it's a problem not just on a set, but kind of worldwide mm -hmm. that women are not. They are quicker to make oh, another woman feel bad than mm -hmm. they are to make a man because they want to please the man. They want to get something from the man. The woman maybe they see as a threat yeah a threat or even sometimes I think um, it's a very fine line between a woman I, I've had it happen myself I've, I've verbally said the words I am not being uh, I don't remember what the anger I'm angry or bitchy or whatever I'm being assertive right. and a woman being assertive is very different than a man being assertive oh, yeah. and so I think sometimes a woman being assertive and being like oh I see a problem let me help you the other woman instead of just being like dude I got you I, I want to take it and go now I know this isn't shaming this is just you know interpretation but when they do that it they take it as a negative, which already starts that downward spiral. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I think a paradigm that could shift is that if women know, if I'm working with you, anything yeah. I, you told me no all the time, which yeah. is great because you had a vision and you yeah. knew what you wanted. And I said yes a lot of And times you said too. yes a lot too. Or you said, I mean, I do. Like it was a very yeah. collaborative space. Yeah. But I think sometimes that collaborative space, people are like, oh, you're gunning for my job. And I think right now in this me too, I'm, I'm probably wrong because I know there are some vindictive people and that goes to the shaming. Again, it goes to intent, though. Like, if you're a person... Yeah. And, and, but it's, it also, in my mind, it goes to insecurity. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and again, it goes back to crazy bitches. Because mm. the whole idea is, if you feel insecure about something, you're vulnerable to being shamed. Mm -hmm. But you're also shaming yourself. Yeah. Right? So, and, and as women, we shouldn't be doing either one. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting when I was writing the, the, the spa days. Mm. Because I had this group of what I call the elder bitches, which I don't, I don't think they like very much because it's kind of at age, but... Hey, Nicole! Hi, Nicole! Hi! Um, it's, but, but I had this group of uh, the bitches, that, three bitches that are, you know, going through changes in their career, um, relating to whether they are viable enough, mm -hmm. young mm -hmm. enough, skinny mm -hmm. enough, whatever. Which is and different then you from have women to men. Which is different. And then you have a group of women that are Hi, small. Daniel. Hi, Daniel. You have a, a younger group of women mm -hmm. whose insecurities and then therefore behavior is magnified a hundredfold from what the older group does. Because I think that as you get older, I hope that as we get older and we have had the opportunity to... Um, Maybe experience to experience and to evolve mm -hmm. and to also just stop and go I don't have time yeah. for this <laughs> I need to just be me mm -hmm. 
and it really doesn't matter anymore because I don't need to play on that field where I'm attracted, have to be attractive and young and thin and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I think it lets women... Thanks, Haley, appreciate it. Uh, it lets women um, treat each other better. Yeah. So those the, that group of three are really very loving to each other. Yes. They might still make mistakes and say things that are a little hurtful, right. but ultimately their goal is to help help each of them through their through their issues yeah. and to reassure them they don't need those issues to be valid. Yeah. 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 So I mean I think that that's true too. Age helps with the feelings of insecurity. Yeah. Well, and being able to really separate. Oh, we're great, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, um, I think it's, you know, uh, especially now with social media and knowing, I don't think this gives anything away by saying this, but your younger generation is very social media millennial yeah, based yeah. and the older generation is like, um, yeah. and so I think that I, I, I personally witnessed it with friends and we go, we all put our best foot forward and we show the world what we want them to show. But inside people can be hurting and so dark. And honestly, it's, it's some of those times when you see those insecurities come out through massive posts or whatever that you're kind of like, wait, what else is going on below that surface? Yeah. And I think that does it's come so with wisdom. True. That is so true. Yeah. It's uh, it is interesting. And um, I had a friend recently, I was like, Oh, we haven't talked for a while. It looks like everything's going great. She's like, Jane, <laughs> that's what I post. Yeah. You know, actually in reality, X, Y, Z is happening and it's been hard, you know? Mm. And I, it's like, I forget, but we are all out there putting the front on, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think that it's given us this fake facade of everything's okay, I'm, I'm fine, I'm checking in with my friends through Facebook, I'm liking their picture, but in reality, um, I, I got off Facebook for a couple of months, and in that time, the number of phone calls, and text messages, and interactions, yeah, and coffee dates, yeah. it was like, that's fun. oh, you know, this is what we do. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like I know what you're doing all yeah. the time, but I don't until we sit down and have yeah. coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can't share everything. Wilma, Wilma from Netherlands. Netherlands. What time is nice. it there? I don't know. What time is it, Wilma? What time is it in the Netherlands right now? I checked my um, watch, but it's it's locked. Three thirty a.m. Oh, oh my you're like god, me. she's a rock star. Okay, you either have a cocktail or you're working, <laughs> or both, or both. You know, or both. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think that you know that Me Too thing has made us all more conscious. Yeah. But I also think to some degree, like I don't want somebody coming on the set and getting in between my actors and me. No. Because I am, I am tr treating them already with what they need mm -hmm. and we rehearse everything. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything is talked out beforehand so that the actors never like, I'm doing what? But that's a benefit that you give your actors and not all productions account for or a lot yeah. of time or, you know. And that's that's a huge. Yeah. Do you think that did you did you on your well did you have any nudity? Oh, mm -mm. Shannon just finished a short film called Holiday Help Desk. Holiday Help Desk. Yeah. No There's nudity. no nudity. It's a I think it's, it's a, a call center. It's a, it's a, it's a G-rated Hallmark <laughs> queer film that's not about coming out. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Hallmark queer queer film is not about coming out. The feature can have a nudity, <laughs> but yeah, you have yeah. to be there. Okay, I will. I'll be your. Nudity advisor. How's that? <laughs> and every other, we'll figure it. We'll figure it out. We need you in all the ways. So I well, guess I, I didn't mention also that you were also a director. Did I say that earlier? Because she's also a director and she's a producer and she's like like most of us mm -hmm. in this industry at the level we are playing at have a responsibility to to make it work for ourselves mm -hmm. because getting into the getting into the right doors can be very difficult mm -hmm. and and you know some of us don't really play that way yeah no why so. kiss kiss butt you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> when you can just go out and show Make your something. work yeah, so you made you made a short this is crazy she made a short in what how many days uh, we shot for two days um, so we took the red eye in we shot for two days we took a first flight out and then uh, went into the editing bay for three and a half days and now we still have color and post audio, but it will be releasing. Tomorrow we start 12 Days of Christmas. So if you follow Believe Entertainment um, on Twitter or Instagram, you can't follow. <laughs> really what happened? How did you lose? Oh my gosh, I woke up and it said something was weird. And I don't remember what. So I didn't get that notification. Have you reset your password? It just wouldn't let me log in. And because I have multiple accounts, because I have both the company and my own. So I go to log in and it's like, uh, your password has changed. And I was like, Okay, so I send my telephone number, it doesn't work. I send my email, it doesn't work. And I say, just send me the link, and it pops up with a dot .ru, a Russia account. Wow. So the, the woman or man took over, his name was, her name, Ollie, 
And I fixed the problem by relinking my Facebook. And then this morning I woke up and Haley Raid figured out that she's it like, Instagram, there. where's Shannon? Because they disabled my account because they probably didn't process it until today. And now they think I'm yeah. the hacker. Oh my God. So. Oh my god. Technology. How about we just like no Russia accounts on social media platforms? Like are they making that yeah. much money from right. Russia emails right. right now? Right. I think we'd all be okay with that. I, I, I would. Mean, <laughs> you know. But, but yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating because when you are releasing something, you want to be able to let people know you're yeah. releasing something. And I was so excited to be here with you and I was like, okay, well I'm going to use every means possible to get the word out since yeah. my means of communication isn't there. Thanks, Aww. Sherry. Hi, Hope. Hi, Sherry. Um, uh, so... You finished the short. Mm -hmm. What's next? So we we actually shot three short films this year, all very different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then those are going to do the festivals. We've got a couple awards already for one of them, um, which stars Kitty Swink and um, uh, Vaughn Armstrong, and uh, and then we did this other one, which we just we did. You know, we went out and we're like, I've got this concept. It's great. It's about DNA testing and because of Ancestry.com and yeah, all of this, yeah, yeah. and then the Golden State Killer and or Golden Bridge Killer, that guy. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it was literally Marim. All right, I'll wrap it up. <laughs> well, uh, my it was story. Marim. It was Marim Dalmar Montgomery, who's an amazing sound guy, both on set and and behind, and uh, me behind camera. And we shot the entire thing with I think our cast definitely outweighed our crew. And that's uh, fun though. It was so much fun. I mean, and I wouldn't want to do it regularly, but no, no, not regularly because yeah. I didn't sleep. But yeah. it was great. Yeah. So that'll come out soon. So the obituaries, okay. Chroma Forty Six, and Holiday Help Desk will drop first, and then of course I have to shout out Hillary, which um, I did a series Hillary. called Passage, which is a sci-fi, a gay sci-fi, which um, I got to act in, which was such a blessing, and I'm really excited about the series. Mandala Rose is in it from Crazy right. Bitches. Mandala. Nicole Payson. I don't know if you know her. I know her name. Name. Yeah. She pops around the industry. Always. Yep. Yeah. Very yeah. queer and ally and yeah. proud, which is great. Yeah. All right, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. I just, I'm like, I, I shot a short for one of my actresses in Crazy Bitches, and I'm still looking at it, going, uh, "I promise you, Carrie, I'm gonna be editing it any day now. I promise." Okay, so it's six thirty, and I have to pee. Yeah. <laughs> Hot water and booze. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like this is reality <laughs> hour. We don't hold anything back except the urine in the tub. Yes. Uh, no. Yeah. No. No. Uh, That's a no. No. That's a no. No. Bob because then they, has to yeah. change it. And normally it'll turn colors. You should oh, just. Yeah. Well, we have a we have a light that turns. So <laughs> really do, come on, well, whatever. I'm technology technologically uh, hampered clearly, yeah. but I want to thank you guys for joining us. Nice. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, anytime. Shannon's great. She's great as an AD. If you're a filmmaker, I'm telling you, hire her. <laughs> thank you. But she's also a great actress, and I'm excited to see her directing work. And I, I just love these women that are self empowered and that are just saying. No, I'm here, I want to do what I want to do, and I'm not going to wait for you to give me permission, I'm just going to do it. I mean, that's an amazingly powerful thing, and I think that all of us can take that into whatever we do. Mm -hmm. Just do what you need to do, ask for what you need to ask for, mm -hmm. don't be scared, don't be afraid, and um, you know, maybe, maybe get lucky. Yeah. Advocating for yourself is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Just don't it's be scary. pushy. It's scary, it's scary, but it's not a bad thing. Hmm. Um, okay, so next week, I don't know who's coming yet. I didn't... You got I two like, minutes. Oh, we got two minutes. But I have we, to wait. I have to, she's got to be. Um, <laughs> I don't know who we're going to have. That's 10-1 in film code. 10-1, that's right. If you're on the set, you go 10-1. But it's really embarrassing for the director because... Because you never like get everything, downtime. Everything waits on you. So if you get up and you go to pee, everybody knows you're peeing because they're all waiting for you to come back and tell them what to do. My favorite, I'm, I'm like watching my clock like an 80. Uh, my favorite was literally we were, the producers were all together and you and you were talking through the next day and you finally just go, guys, I gotta pee. And we stopped because she hadn't stopped all day. And then literally it was like, okay, I, I'm, I gotta stop this meeting. <laughs> but you do go, I mean, literally you're like, I can't stop now. No. I'll go on the next time. I'll, I'll go at lunch. Now. Yeah, I'll go at lunch. <laughs> but no, I can't go at lunch. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, and if you ever get a chance to be on a film set, you should because mm -hmm. I'm especially a low budget film set because we are all working uh, crazy hours doing a million jobs and um, and we love it. And we love it, but it's it's so hard. But we're having fun at the same time. Yeah. I think we have a couple pictures I'm going to post later of you. Aww, thank having you. Fun, having fun with you. I'm so... Oh. <laughs> and there it is. On that note, I love you all. Come back next Tuesday. And if you have a subject that you'd like us to talk about, let us see. That, uh, Shannon, you have here...
that hire my ass, but hmm. Anyway, I don't know what that was. All right. It's 6.30, we're gonna sign off and check in next week when we're gonna have some other fun, fabulous person talking about what they do. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> I literally lost. I was like, don't let the red hair dye go in the hot tub. <laughs> When did it come out? It won't come out. Oh, it would come out. It's it's just because it's